What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, MCJ, back with another Power Automate video and we are looking at SharePoint triggers still and we are looking at when an item is deleted. This trigger runs when a row of data in a SharePoint list is deleted. So let's take a look at how it works. So in Power Automate here, I'm going to click on add a trigger. We're going to type in SharePoint. A bad capitalization there. Let's click on see more and then we're going to scroll down until we get to when an item is deleted. Now what we need for this one is we need the site address and the list name. So we now choose our MCJ site one. And then we get a filtered list of lists from that site. And we now choose MCJ list one. You can use environment variables rather than hard coding these values in. Uh, but for this scenario, we're just going to hard code them in. Now, next bit is how often do you want to check for the item? So what Power Automate will do is it will poll SharePoint and it'll check for changes every so often. And this is how we configure this. So we have interval, which is a whole number, and then frequency, which is your second minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months. So what we will do is we will choose, well, we'll just leave the options by default here, but you can cho choose and change these options based on your requirements. Next two things are the things that we've seen in all the connectors, all the triggers so far is time zone and start time. So start time is if you want to future date this flow. So you want to say, I don't want to run this flow until next week, next month, next year. You can put in a date and time in this which is in the year, month, day format, followed by a time. It gives you the example here in the hint text. Now you can select the time zone for this, meaning that Power Automate will adapt the start time that you put in and run it at that time zone um, for that start time. That's what this means. So if you have, if you're building this flow in the UK, for example, and you want this to run based on US time, you could actually specify it from then. But again, this will only happen once, so this only delays this, your flow actually running until that start time um, is, is you know in the past. So we've got our trigger here, and we'll just add in a quick compose step. So I'll click Add Action, chuck in the compose step to make this a valid flow, and we'll just put in some random text there. We'll choose Save and then we'll choose test. So we'll say we will manually perform this test. We'll go down to test here. We see the flow has started and now we'll flick over to our SharePoint site. Here is our SharePoint site. You can see I've got four items in here. So I've got test one, test two, test three, this is awesome, and flow test number four. If I choose one of these columns, say this one, and then go to uh, delete, which is there, I just couldn't see it. Delete. And choose, it says, do you want to remove this, put, put this in your recycle bin? Say delete. we see the message there to say that it's been deleted. And what we'll do is we'll go back to our flow and we will wait for it to run. Then we can see our flow is run here. We've got the green ticks all the way down. If we click on the delete action, <coughs> we can scroll down and we can see some information. So we've got like the inputs here and then the outputs is what we're actually interested in. The outputs are got the headers, but the body is, is going to give us some details. So we can see that it gives us the ID number. So all items in SharePoint will have some sort of a uh, unique ID. Um, this one was number seven. It has a name. So that was the, the name or the title of my flow, uh, title of my item in the list item in, in the list there. So flow test number four, for instance, it says file name with extension, which there was no extension because there's no file name. Deleted by user, so it gives us the details of the user that deleted it, which was me. And we can also see the time it's deleted. And if it was a folder, true or false, uh, it was false. It was just an item inside of a list. So that's what this connector, this sorry, this trigger does. So this will pull power, pull by Power Automate to SharePoint to see when rows have been deleted from a SharePoint list. This could be useful if you have, say, some data that you need to not be deleted, and um, for whatever reason you, you restrict it, but then something happens, a, a 
flow goes off and deletes it because it's got the relevant permissions, or an admin user goes off and deletes it because it's got rel- because they've got the relevant permissions and the delete back accident. This can actually alert people to that deleted data. Similarly, you can use it to keep like an audit log of when things are deleted and stuff like that. So again, you can just have more uh, granularity on all of these things. So there's a couple of scenarios that I was thinking about, but what about you? What do you use this trigger for? Or what are you plan to use this trigger for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that'd be great. If you've not already, click the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.